conclude on composite aggregation. So we know that we are talking about a whole part where the whole exclusively holds the part. Now coming to the last relationship, dependency. So dependency is nothing but the user's relationship. We call it as a behavioral relationship. So what I mean by that is you do not have any impact on the structures or data members of your class. I would term dep dependency as one of the four things. A class references another class only within its methods for the purpose of one, invoking a static method, local instantiation, formal argument use or written type. Let's look at this first example here. Let's suppose that <clears throat> class A needs to invoke static methods of class B. You would quite obviously not inherit the class B or contain an instance of B to invoke the static method. In this case, you would notice that the relationship is more at the level of methods. So the method F1 invokes method 1, which is a static method in class B. I term this as dependency as it is behavioral. Another example for dependency is you could possibly have non-static methods. So you might want to instantiate instances locally, invoke the method and obviously in C++ release memory for the instance. But very clearly notice that the object B1 is not an attribute of class A. Had it been an attribute of class A, you would term it as has a relationship. However, the instance B1 is localized to the method F1. You typically call this as dependency. So whenever you invoke a static method, you call it as dependency. When you have local instantiation method level, you again term it as dependency. The third form would be formal argument use. It's quite possible that the methods of a class take other class instances as arguments. In such a case, you might still want to hash include those files or you still have dependencies with classes from other files. So therefore, you still term this as dependency. The last form of dependency is return type. If I were to write a factory, a factory would not inherit the class it creates, the class it instantiates rather, the factory would not contain the instance. So quite obviously, a factory keeps creating and returning many instances. So whenever you have in your code a method having a return type as another class type, you would look at this as dependency. So if you were to look at the rational rows representation of dependency, <coughs> they call it as dependency or instantiates. So you would represent this as B factory has a dependency on B or B factory instantiates an instance of B. To reiterate, a dependency is behavioral whenever a class invokes a static method or you have local instantiation or formal arguments are being used or a method has written types of as other classes, you would term it as dependency. So dependency is behavioral. It is known as users. So all the relationships can be represented with my meta model here, where UML class relationships can be seen as two types, one structural, two behavioral. If it is structural, this would be either is A or has A. If it is is A, you would have generalization, which represents implementation inheritance, and realization, which represents interface inheritance. Now all has A's would primarily be associations. A special form of association would be aggregation, which represents a whole part meaning to the relationship. A even specialized form of aggregation would be composite aggregation, also known as composition. So the meta model clearly indicates this. Finally, we have only one type of behavioral relationship known as users, which is known as dependency. So all the talking I've been doing for the last one hour can actually be simplified and represented with one single meta model that you see here, which can serve as a reference point. So to reiterate, whenever instances are engaged in a collaboration, which is known as message passing or invoking methods, 
you would have to have a relationship existing between classes in UML and in OVO we could possibly have a few different types of relationships so primarily all relationships are either is a has a or uses in UML we have seen six types of relationships namely generalization realization association aggregation composition and dependency I hope this would be a useful round trip of UML and all the relationships between classes. Thank you.